All right, everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing a deep dive into the world of boren cattle. Fascinating breed. They are. Yeah. You know, they thrive in some seriously tough conditions. Yeah, really adaptable. And we're going to really explore what makes them stand out, especially for farmers who, you know, are trying to make a living. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about efficiency. Okay. I mean, we're, we're talking about like feed conversion, how much meat you get for the food that you're putting in. Yeah, that's huge. For a farmer, I mean, that's their bottom line, right? It is. So explain it to me like I'm a farmer trying to make a living. Okay, so picture this. Oh. Two cows, same amount of food. All right. The boron, though, they're built different, right? Correct. They got this heritage of like surviving on these sparse African plains. Right. They're going to pack on more pounds of meat compared to, say, your average Angus. So it's not just about how much they eat, it's how their bodies use it. Exactly. It's all about that feed conversion ratio, you know, the yes. FCR. Often lower for borins, which means, what? They're using their feed more efficiently. Less food, more meat. Yeah. That sounds like a win for the farmer's wallet. Absolutely. But, okay, here's the other question. Okay. Does this efficiency mean we're sacrificing something like, what about the quality of the meat? That's where it gets interesting. Oh, really? The Boren Cattle Breeders Society, they did this whole project okay. specifically looking at meat quality. Let me get the data. Yeah, yeah. They studied 55 bulls 55. from different breeders over 12 weeks. Wow. Tracking everything daily food intake to weight gain. I'm guessing they didn't just put them on a scale every week, right? You're right. They had some high-tech methods going on. Okay. Real-time ultrasound scanning. Wow. Looking at the bull's development, seeing how they were growing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It actually helped them predict, like, carcass traits. Oh, wow. Even select for, you know, superior genetics in breeding programs. So they're looking ahead, too, huh? Absolutely. Thinking long-term. It's like peeking inside, you know, right. seeing how those grazing machines are working. So tell me, yeah. what did they find out about the meat itself? Okay, get this. Okay. They found the boron meat to be remarkably tender. Really? I'm talking surpassing other beef breeds, kind of tender. Wait, so they're efficient and they taste good? Yeah. It sounds almost too good to be true. What's the catch? That's the million dollar question. Yeah. If they check all the boxes, hearty, efficient, high quality meat, why aren't they more widespread? It makes you think mm -hmm. maybe there are factors we haven't even considered. Right. Is it a marketing challenge or they're like, you know, breeding hurdles that make them harder to raise on a larger scale. Yeah, there's a whole other layer to this story. It goes beyond just the science. Yeah, Consumer uh, preferences, have people even heard of boron beef? That's a good question. Are there cultural or regional factors at play? It's like we're um, uncovering this mystery of why this seemingly perfect breed hasn't taken the world by storm. That's what makes this so interesting. Yeah. It's not just about the science, it's the economics, it's the cultural perception. It all ties in. Now I have to know. Okay. Have you actually tasted boring beef? You know, funny you should ask. Yeah. I did. Yeah. It lived up to the hype. Really? It was juicy, it was flavorful, this delicate tenderness. I knew it. It's one thing to read about it. Right. But to actually taste it, experience it. It makes it real. Exactly. That's the power of combining like the scientific knowledge with the real world experience. Totally. It paints a much richer picture, more nuanced. Totally. It really blows my mind. Yeah. If it's this good, why isn't it like everywhere? It's a real head scratcher, isn't it? Yeah. I think it shows you how complicated our food systems are. Sometimes it's not just about, you know, efficiency right. or even taste. There's all these factors, a yeah. whole web of things going on. So for our listeners, Maybe hearing about boring cattle for the first time. Yeah. What would you say is like the big takeaway here? Well, I think the big thing is that, you know, yeah. innovation in agriculture, it can come from some pretty surprising places. That's true. You got this breed thriving for what, centuries? Yeah, crazy. In tough environments, and they got lessons to teach us. What kinds of lessons? About efficiency, about sustainability. Right, we talked about that. And, you know, even culinary delight. Can't forget that part. It's a reminder that there's always more to discover, always more to explore. Absolutely. And maybe even, you know, more delicious beef to enjoy out there. Well said. I love that. Thanks. So to our listeners, next time you're at the butcher shop or looking at a menu, yeah. remember the Boran. Right. This, you know, lean, mean grazing machine. They're out there. That's really changing how we think about what makes a great steak. Definitely food for thought. It is. 
All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. Always a pleasure. Until next time.